Hey everyone, this is Carolyn with Hollywood First Look Features and tonight it is the top eight finalists of The Voice. Let's check it out. You know, prepping for this particular performance, you know, now that you've had so many other performances in the bag, mm -hmm. you know, what 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 piece of confident ad advice do you give yourself before you go on stage? Man, just to believe in myself. You know, I've gotten to this point for a reason. Yes. I must be doing something right. And so every time I get a chance to, you know, get another opportunity to let my heart speak, I'm like all for it. I'm ready. I'm excited. We, before you went on, there was a little bit of a preview, and all we just saw was you and, and this dress and this hair, and I'm like... Of course. Wait, was fine. I standing with Red and yeah. Adam? Yeah, I was like, oh man, they're gonna like unveil it before I'm like actually no, no, out there. No, no. But we were sitting in the press room and I was like, yeah, <laughs> that's Chloe. Like, so my theme, my theme for this week, as silly as this sounds, I always like to have a little theme and I was like sad 80s prom queen. So I wanted the big hair, the blue dress. Oh like imagine I just like win the prom, but I'm like sad about it. And I'm like, I want to know what love is. You know what I mean? I don't know why I need that, but I always love to have like an inspiration. Yeah. So as soon as I thought of this song, I was like, oh my gosh. And I like, came up with this like, okay, sparkly dress, like uh, the necklace, like very 80s jewelry. Thank you. And, and then you sang the song. Yes, and of yes. course I was singing along with you in the press, wow. in the press room, but Man, you have such a soulful voice. Thank like, you. I mean, how did it feel like taking on that song? It's a very iconic song. Yeah, it's extremely iconic. What's kind of uh, extremely, extremely like emotional for me is that I used to play that song in bars and clubs when there was maybe like 20 to 50 people in the room, and I had moments where I was like, "Is it ever going to get past this?" Like. It, is anyone going to hear me? And then I'm now doing it on national television where not just America, but countries all around the world mm -hmm. are fans of um, this show and fans of rock music. How was it tonight when you, when you finished your performance? I mean, what were the first things that like popped up in your head? Well, the first thing that popped in my head was I better not be in the bottom, <laughs> you know? I mean, last week it was tough being in the bottom, especially, you know, when I, I tend to think I give my all in every performance, but I understand that by, it's only eight of us. It's kind of hard to narrow it down, so this week I was just geared towards more so leaving everything on the stage, pouring my heart out. You know, I wanted them to hear me sing parts and sing vocals like they've never heard me sing before and just really leave everything on the stage and really had to go back to thinking about, you know, my humble beginnings and of adversity and being homeless and everything, that being gravity and this competition being the light if I can just stay here in the light in the competition, I hopefully can win this competition. Is that at all surprising? I mean, knowing what, like, not to say that, you know, Blake's pers uh, persona, like, on camera or, like, his TV's persona is any different than what we see, but was that surprising at all? Well, you know, it was and it wasn't. I mean, I thought that Blake would, you know, I'm not being ugly, but I figured Blake would be, he'd be smart enough as a coach to know, well, I got to let Red do what he does. I mean, I, I'm 40 years old. I've been doing it for a long time. And, and, and to try to take a guy that's my age that does what I do and change him. You're Blake, set in your way. Yeah, I mean, Red. Blake would know. He knows. He knows that would never work. I mean, it'd be like me saying, all right, Blake, we got to change what you're doing. So, uh, yeah, you know, it was um, – it, it really wasn't a surprise. But, you know, it, it was. it's worked out really well. <laughs> this week's song, I mean, just the performance and everything together – I was sitting in my seat just, I mean, look at my face, like, <laughs> just floored. How are you feeling coming out off of that? I mean, it was, it was fantastic. I just felt like that release, the, the music, the music has, I think that's, that's the, one of the best things that I love about performing and that I love about music is every time I'm in it, it's therapeutic and it's a way of releasing all the stress, releasing any type of emotion that you're feeling. And so that's that's all I did, and so <laughs> it feels great. When you were saying, you know, I want this to be the modern day Eye of the Tiger, I can't tell you, those of us are sitting in the press room watching, we're going, yes, Noah, <laughs> and you brought it. Thank you. Yeah, no, it, it has a strength and a power and aggression in, in you know, in, in those lyrics, and so I just had to go with it. I mean, it's something that I've never really done in a song before is really tap into that super almost uh, sensual aggression. I want you guys to tell me what the voice dream, the voice neon dreams is all about. I want to know all yeah. about it. <laughs> all right. Well, the voice neon dreams is a live concert experience. We're gonna be there indefinitely at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. It's gonna be so crazy. Like literally, it's a show where you can hear every genre of music from every generation. Like literally, the show is from five years and up. Like all ages show. So it's like 
it's going to be an amazing thing. Like everything you've seen from The Voice times 10. And this is like an after The Voice and then like The Voice amplified and we're getting to do like so many amazing numbers and different things that we wouldn't necessarily think to do. Like literally there's going to be recording booths in the in the in the lobby of the show so people can audition basically to actually perform with us in the show and then potentially have an opportunity to have a blind audition on The Voice. The cast that we have right now, Allison Porter, Chris Mian, Matthew Schuler, Michael Sanchez, Matt McAndrew, yeah. the one and only. <laughs> Spring 2018 is uh, when we're gonna open up the doors. Yeah, but how deep are you guys into like practice and production and all that stuff? Well, we're, we've uh, had a few rehearsals here and there, and uh, I think we're right now really figuring out what the show's really about with the numbers that we were putting on, who's singing what, um, you know, the, we have you know big solo songs and duets and trios and big group numbers. So, and we'll also be playing a lot of different instruments as well. Week by week, you know, somebody's going home, and this week it is a quadruple elimination. I can't wrap my head around it. So, how are you as a contestant doing? Um, I'm doing good. I just feel a lot of peace right now. And no matter what happens, like, because what uh, made me feel a lot of pressure at first was I just, I love Miley so much and I want her to be represented um, because she didn't have that last time. So I want, and, but it's all on me now, you know? So um, it's a lot of pressure, but I just know that I left my heart and my soul out on that stage. So no matter what happens, I know that I did my best and I know I made her proud.